employment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the district or legal counsel for the district, and collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or their representatives. I will entertain a motion to go out of closed session. So moved. Second. A motion and a second are heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The motion passes. Good evening and welcome to the April 20th board meeting. Our mission is to educate students to be self-directed learners, collaborative workers, complex thinkers, quality producers, and community contributors. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Board members present this evening. Uh, Chris Joe Kosminski, Christine Gerke, and Janet Yang Rohr. Okay, at this point, please join the Board of Education in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. At this point, we've reached the point in our agenda for good news. Okay, well, good news is that um, we are here, we are healthy, we are able to have our board meeting. Um, we are in uh, school session. Uh, as the line goes, um, school buildings are closed, learning continues. So uh, great news um, just throughout the community in the school district, number of our uh, faculty, staff, students, parents stepping forward to support our first responders uh, and help, um, help them out throughout this crisis. We've had a number of staff working on uh, producing and manufacturing personal protective equipment to donate to local um, uh, facilities. I'll talk a little bit more about remote learning and other directives from the, the state uh, during the superintendent's report. Okay, we have reached the point in our agenda for public comment. The Board of Education welcomes comments from the public at its meetings. Citizens who wish to address the Board of Education should identify themselves by name and home address. Comments by individuals shall be limited to three minutes. If the person is representing multiple individuals or groups, such person may be allowed to speak for five minutes. Issues raised during public comment will be taken under advisement by the Board of Education, but will not be discussed this evening. Issues raised during public participation may be added to future agendas or addressed by administrative staff. The superintendent is the board's designee to coordinate response to public comments and will apprise the board accordingly. I believe we have a public comment. I know this is a different procedure where we're gonna have you read it, Susan. So I believe we have one public comment. Go ahead and read that. Um, this comment was submitted via email from a C period Tipton. Due to COVID-19, district has had lower cost, lower overhead costs, less staff, et cetera. And homes have had an increase in expenses due to job loss and stay at home order. How is the district taking this into consideration as families struggle to pay the upcoming property taxes? How is the district making taxpayers whole? Okay, all right. On behalf of the Board of Education, thank you to that individual for your comment. And as a reminder, the superintendent is the board's designee to coordinate a response to this public comment and he will apprise the board accordingly. Okay, we will move on now to the monthly reports. Listed in board docs are the monthly reports, treasury, investments, insurance, and budget. Does any member of the Board of Education have a question regarding any of our monthly reports? Okay, we will move on to the action by consent. Okay, I had, um, I was, um, I uh, reviewed bills and claims this month and thanks to Mike and Tracy, we did it uh, over email and Tracy provided really good explanations by email to the questions that I had. So it went pretty quick, um, especially on my end. So I move approval of warrant number 1024298 through warrant number 1024788 totaling $27,800,613.55 for the period of March 17th, 2020 to April 20th, 2020. In addition to um, 
item 7.02 through item 7.13. Second. A motion and a second are heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. One key. Yes. Yang Roar? Aye. Gurky? Yes. Kush? Aye. Leong? Aye. Kosminski? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Okay, the motion passes. So we will move on in our agenda to item eight, communications. Item 8.01 is our written communications and you will note in board docs our Freedom of Information Act request for your perusal. So we will move on to item 8.02, superintendent staff school report. Sure, just a handful of comments um, this evening. You know, first uh, is a result of the action of the Board of Education, the consent agenda. I have a couple uh, uh, appointments to, to celebrate and to announce. Um, Andrea Mitchell uh, has officially now been selected as the next principal at Ranchview Elementary School. We'd previously introduced her to the community. And then uh, Mrs. Voice, congratulations to Mrs. Voice, who will be returning to the principal ranks as the principal at Madison Junior High School. Uh, Zaren Anderson will be reassigned to work here at the PSAC. So good luck to Nancy, um, and I know you'll do great, and I know you're excited to get back to the middle school level. So a couple of great reassignments uh, uh, there. Uh, and then, you know, it goes without saying that we are obviously in uh, uncharted territory here every day, uh, unprecedented times with uh, the state of, uh, really beyond just learning, but the, the state of our entire uh, society right now in response to the COVID-19 uh, crisis. Uh, I will say that I'm extremely uh, proud of this team that you see here with you this evening uh, for their leadership and the work they've done with our building principals, uh, all of our staff uh, throughout the district and everything to keep this district running and keep this district going. Um, special shout out especially uh, to the custodial maintenance staff who have worked hard to ensure that our facilities stay safe uh, and stay open for um, well, to, to be prepared to be open uh, and available to uh, us when we may need them on the staff on occasion. So uh, definitely, um, you know, our essential workers out there doing things like drive bus drivers and assistance, ensuring that they're supporting us and helping us get kids fed uh, throughout this pandemic crisis. So those families who count on us uh, for a breakfast and a lunch are able to get those meals. Uh, and we did that through spring break. It, it's been really just a, a team effort. We are working really uh, right now under uh, pretty uh, clear guidance and guidelines from the state of Illinois uh, re regarding the type of uh, learning that takes place. As you know, uh, on Friday, March 13th, when I announced that we would uh, be shutting down until spring break, the governor followed shortly with uh, uh, a closure and a suspension of in-person learning for all students in the state of Illinois between March 17th uh, and uh, uh, March 31st, uh, and we've since extended that through the end of the school year. The initial days were considered active God days. Uh, learning was not required at the time. Uh, it was optional. Districts were encouraged to try to provide e-learning, uh, and we were able to do that and, and turn that plan around quickly. Great work by our staff coming together. E-learning is defined really is, is not intended for a, a long period of time. It's more of a short uh, term solution to things like emergency school closings for snow, or cold weather and whatnot. Uh, but for, for a number of days, we were able to implement that e-learning plan. Uh, and then as the pandemic grew and, and the data told the governor that we needed to you know, really further our social distance and keep groups away um, and close in-person learning for a longer period of time, uh, we transitioned to what's known as remote learning uh, it, with guidance provided to us regarding the number of minutes that we should have in a day by the state of Illinois uh, to how we should do with the primary goals uh, of remote learning really to be provide social emotional support to try to continue instruction and provide opportunities to uh, students to improve their standing uh, really kind of that focus uh, uh, right there so our uh, our team had to work uh, very hard uh, to come up with a remote learning plan that uh, we're, we're really proud of I, I know for you know some of our families uh, it, it might be too much for them right now for others of our families it's not enough we, we hear you we're constantly evaluating what we're doing uh, and looking at our plans to ensure that we are in this unprecedented time providing the best type of support we can to ensure our kids are healthy uh, and safe and also continuing uh, their education uh, also you know there's been some conversation about um, you know, you know we uh, um, 
re regarding the guidance provided by the state of Illinois, uh, the governor's office uh, especially, uh, in terms of ensuring that uh, you know payroll continues. We are under guidance from the state of Illinois that it, that uh, we continue to um, uh, operate as if uh, school is in session. And so drivers, bus drivers, for example, who may not be driving routes every day, uh, we are continuing to support them at the direction of, of the state. Um, so we'll continue to uh, assess and evaluate. Uh, we just recently comp completed a quick survey uh, of our parents on how it's going. Uh, and so we're, our team has been looking at that. And most notably, what we were trying to get out of that is uh, security of kids and families with food uh, and resources and, and, and shelter. So uh, those were our primary concerns right now and our learning services team working hard to ensure that uh, we're being responsive with our, our education as well. So these definitely are unprecedented times. There's probably a ton of questions that people have out there. Uh, and, and some of the most notable questions we're getting now is what about this activity or what about that activity? We did communicate on the high schools regarding, especially for our seniors, uh, regarding some of those special end of um, uh, education uh, things that we have going to prom, for example, in graduation. So we've communicated that. Uh, we're beginning uh, to finalize plans at the uh, other levels for things like moving on ceremonies. And we'll be communicating those out as soon as well. Uh, so with that, I think uh, this team in front of you, again, a special shout out. It's everybody here, but Jane, uh, Willard, Christine, I go the work that they've been doing with their teams to help get this going. And then Chuck and Nancy, their work every day with the principal. I, you know, I, I, should, I should shout out everybody, but you know, it really is this team. It's a team effort. So uh, I'm proud of the work that we're doing and be happy to answer any questions that you have, but uh, I think things are going very well. Thank you for that report, Dan. And I think on behalf of the board, we also wanna thank you as well as our teachers, our administrators, all our staff, our foundation, NEF, and our community partners for all the work that you're doing to provide such an outstanding academic and social support for our students and families, many of whom we know are having a difficult time. And thank you also for your wonderful efforts to communicate with the community. That's also been something that the board has been very proud of. We are thinking of our students and families all the time and we appreciate you um, expressing that on our behalf. So thank you very much. Um, I would also just like to note for the board as well, um, during this time period, the Illinois Association of School Boards and our uh, LEND Association are working to try to provide us with the support that we need um, virtually through Zoom, et cetera. Um, ISB is working to conduct some um, Zoom sessions for large districts. They, um, through an email glitch, were getting sent to our spam. But if you check your uh, email spam folder, particularly for April 13th and 14th, there were some, um, there were some events that were going on for ISB and there's some upcoming ones where they're going to continue to try to provide an effort for school board members to connect with one another virtually um, so that we can provide the best governance that we can during this time. Okay, so that's the president's report. Um, we will move on to item 8.04 board of education reports. Do we have any board of education reports this evening? Okay, so we will move to discussion without action. We will move to item 9.01, item 2020-2021, board meeting calendar. So loaded in board docs for your review, uh, no action this evening, just a review of, of, of proposed dates for the 2020-2021 uh, school year. Uh, I'll note a few exceptions to our typical for, for the community. We typically meet the first and third Monday of every month. Uh, in July, we tend to have one meeting. Uh, we're proposing this one on the 13th uh, and at nine in the morning. That's typically a very light agenda just for the purpose of really uh, some payroll uh, bills as well as some hiring during that season. Uh, board members did indicate with enough notice we, we could do a nine in the morning meeting. So we'll tentatively look at that. If, if things come up, we can, we can discuss that. In September, we'll meet on a Tuesday, September 8th. Uh, Monday is Labor Day. Uh, we note uh, where winter break uh, is occurring. Uh, winter break will be through January 5th. So the fourth, uh, that first meeting will be during winter break. On the 19th, we follow the uh, Martin Luther King Day, uh, which is on Monday the 18th. So that's also a Tuesday meeting, followed in February by another Tuesday meeting after President's Day. That meeting will be scheduled for February 16th. And then in May, uh, uh, we're looking at uh, potential dates for graduation. Uh, we haven't solidified that or finalized that, so that may be able to go back to its normal Monday. We'll be happy to answer any questions that the board has. Questions from the board on the calendar. Okay. 
Okay, I don't see any questions. Thank you for your explanation. If, oh, Donna, I see a question from Donna. Donna. Hold on. Okay, sorry. Okay. Um, okay, so for April, uh, I see the note now at the bottom that says spring break is through April 5th. So are we uh, originally the date there was April 6th and then now it says April 5th. So are, is spring break, is April 5th a day off from school? Yeah, I'll have to check that. We'll we'll review that and have it uh, updated for the next time. Okay, because the originally the meeting was listed as April sixth, and I asked. We'll review it. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you for catching that. Any other questions? Okay, if anyone has questions, um, please feel free to send them to our superintendent. Um, and thank you for the explanation with regard to uh, the meeting in July, which is at a different time, as well as the additional um, variances from the twice monthly calendar, first and third. Okay, um, so we will move on to item 10, discussion with action. We will have action this evening on item 10.01, policy 4.20, fund balance. Okay, actually, the, the next three policies are policies the board has discussed at multiple meetings starting in the beginning of February. Uh, we were actually scheduled for action with these at the first meeting in April, which we, we canceled uh, due to the social distancing guidelines at the time. Um, and so we're bringing them to you with no, there's no changes since the last time you saw them. As I said, they were ready for action on the, um, the last April meeting. Uh, so uh, revised board policy 420 regarding fund balance is, is loaded for your review. Uh, we'd recommend that the board approve it as presented. Uh, Mike Francis, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Okay, and thank you. And obviously during our discussions, we had made significant um, edits, um, which are all contained in board docs. Questions from the board? Charles, I see a question from Charles and then Paul. Yeah, okay. Um, if Okay, I'll go first. Um, no, I just wanted to uh, say in reviewing this, thanks for, I know we had a, a little bit of back and forth discussion mm -hmm. and really happy to note that the adjustments were made. So appreciate the flexibility of the team in pulling all of this together. Uh, I think the language looks, uh, looks good and um, happy that we were able to incorporate some of those changes. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Okay, Paul. Would it be possible to include the status of these three policies, not just the fund balance, into our monthly reports and or our websites. So we mean just like as a part of what we uh, tweet out in terms of the board took action on on this. Is that what you mean? Uh, no, I mean there are there are several equations and and formulas to determine if we are in compliance with these three new policies or changed policies. And would it be possible to show the ongoing result of those equations in our monthly reports, say from you know, earlier in our agenda okay. and or on our website? So like uh, that, Mike, you would put a part of in the budget report, um, a status with regard to the fund balance, revenue investment. I mean, we have revenue investment report. So are you suggesting like text as a part of that that would say we are in compliance with our policy here? The, the, the policy addresses that fund balance is a point in time at the end of the fiscal year on June 30th. And there's, uh, you know, when we receive our taxes, that, that percentage goes up a lot, and then it gets drawn down uh, quite a bit, too, between September and May. So as you, the, the monthly financial reports already show the monthly draw on fund balance, I could think about what we could, um, what we might be able to add a percentage to that in there. We do have those percentages in our financial projections as a percentage of fund balance that the board typically reviews a few times a year. Um, I'm not sure if, the, again, because we're measuring it at really at the end of the year, I, I don't know if it's if, if it matches what the language of the fund balance policy is trying to uh, provide and promote. I guess what I'm getting to is if we are only able to review it once a year, it could get out of compliance at any point during the year if we are not presented the information. So then Again, in a minute, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Kristen. 
I was just going to say then at a minimum, you would want to present that every time we see a five-year projection. So that would be like a couple times a year. Um, that would give us a starting point. Um, Mike, are you suggesting that it's difficult to, um, to really get a good look at the percentage in a monthly window? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure that the, the the spirit of that language is to look at it monthly. It's really to look at it annually. The school district revenues and expenditures are very cyclical, meaning that the majority of our re revenue comes in the same months, and how we spend our money is very typical year over year. So you're not going to see tremendous changes. We provide a lot of monthly, in the monthly reports that are already provided, you can compare where we're at this month versus where we were at a year ago this month. And then the board would be able to decipher a lot of information from that too. This is another piece of measurement against all of our financial picture, uh, uh, picture in, 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 uh, in totality. Yeah, and, and I would I would add to that though. Again, the language that we've been reviewing since the beginning of February specifically states that the date of measurement will be that one point in time, June 30th of each fiscal year. Uh, the first proposed new paragraph in green um, under the under the introductory paragraph states that. So, um, you know, I, I, so based on the language in the policy that we have been reviewing, it really only seeks for that one measurement in time. Am I right, Mike? That is correct. That is, it's in the yeah, it's in the first new paragraph of policy 420, where it indicates that specific date of measurement as the last day of the fiscal year, which is typical of all school districts and their fund balance policies as to when they would be measuring their fund balance and how we would compare against each other. That's the common date of the last fiscal year where your audits are done. Everything is measured, so there's a common apples to apples comparison, not only for us on a year over year basis, but Others also. Donna. So um, I understand completely what you're saying that it's a June 30th. Um, I guess maybe what I'm hearing Paul say is if we if we project, let's say Mike, you're you know looking at where we're going to end up on June 30th, and we know that we're rolling the taxes that are coming in early into the uh, next year. Um, if you're looking at it and it looks like we're going to be at 5% or something astronomically different than our policy, I'm assuming that you would have given us a heads up, like we're not going to hear that after the fact, you're going to be giving us some kind of projection that, hey, we're going to fall short, we need to be thinking about this. Is that correct? That, that is correct. Uh, yes, we will know far in advance. Um, and, and even if the taxes come in late this year, which they may, or we may get a smaller distribution based on some actions that the county boards may take in terms of granting some uh, delayed payments of those taxes, by deferring those and measuring it against without it, it's not going to affect that necessarily that percentage. So we will not be surprised uh, right. by the measurement before the end of the year. So Paul, does that address your concerns as far as, I, I see what you're saying, you don't wanna be out of policy. And so it sounds to me like, um, like Mike's gonna give us a heads up when we're, uh, if we're looking like we're gonna project into that. That would be great. And I think as well, you know, this policy talks about the spending plan. So just whenever we would hear updates on that, just reflecting that as per policy 4.20, because of our percentage being at X, whatever it was, that's why we created this plan. You know what I'm saying? Mike? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I heard most of it, but I didn't get the question. I, I, I'm, I'm, ex except I'm expressing that I think that in addition to having a warning, if we were going to go low on the policy, um, we would just simply want to ensure that anything that is sort of surrounding this policy, such as the spending plan that it requires, that, that when we would look at anything that would have to do with that, that it would remind us of our policy and why we put that plan together, i.e. our due to our policy 4.20, we had to make this plan because our reserves were at X, you know, something, 
of the kind so that we were able to, if we were looking at something within the year that related to 4.20, that we would be able to recall our percentages. I would imagine that would be similar to how the board looked at policy 440 and the let paragraph at the bottom that we're removing, which is really being replaced with the language in 420, as really a guide for a lot of the decisions that the board would be looking at on a, on a, a normal basis. We would, we would anticipate and plan on using this language in the guidance of those decisions or recommendations moving forward also. Okay. Any other questions or comments about how we would utilize this policy and inform ourselves of these percentages? Okay, if there are no other questions, I will entertain a motion. I move approval of item 10.01, policy 4.20 fund balance as presented. Second. A motion is second or heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Fitzgerald. Aye. Wanke. Aye. Gerke? Yes. Yang Roar? Aye. Leon? Aye. Kosminski? Aye. Okay, the motion passes. So we will Push. move on. Pardon me? I don't know if you can hear me, but I said aye. So. I didn't hear, I didn't hear Did him. Did you not call I, him? Okay. No, she, I think she called me. She I just don't think she heard okay. me. <laughs> okay. So we have all eyes. Okay, the motion passes unanimously. We will move on to item 10.02, policy 4.30, revenue and investments. Also a policy that has been uh, reviewed at previous board meetings, the Illinois Sustainable Investing Act became effective on January 1st, 2020, which uh, required us to change our investment policy accordingly. Uh, recommended revisions have been uh, loaded in board docs. Be happy to, not, no changes since you've last seen it. Be happy to answer any questions that you have. Okay, questions from the board. I don't see any questions, so I will entertain a motion. I move to approve uh, policy number 4.30, revenue and investments as presented. Second. A motion is second or heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Yang Roar? Aye. Kush? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Wanke? Aye. Kosminski? Aye. Leong? Aye. Gerke? Yes. Okay, the motion passes. So we will move on to item 10.03, policy 4.40, incurring debt. And finally, also reviewed uh, with the board beginning at the first meeting in February, were recommended updates to our fund balance, fund balance policy 440. No changes since you've last seen it. Uh, it. It was last updated to reflect requests at the Board of Education. Uh, no other changes. Be happy to answer any questions. Okay, are there questions or comments from the board? Okay, I don't see any, so I'll entertain a motion. I move, I move to, to approve. approve. Item 10.03. Second. A motion and second are heard. Please call the roll, Mrs. Patton. Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald? Aye. Kosminski? Aye. Gerke? Gerke? Yes. Kush? Aye. Leong? Aye. Yang Roar? Aye. Wan Ki? Aye. Okay, the motion passes. Um, Dan, might you just say something about the rest of the items that we had on the agenda previously and the fact that we'll see those going forward, but that we're delaying them due to the ISBE guidance? Yeah, we have received guidance. Um, um, there, yeah, as you're aware, based on how we're conducting this meeting, uh, some guidance uh, from the state regarding, um, you know, some, some um, um, re relaxing of some of the restrictions under the Open Meetings Act. Um, and so uh, part of that guidance then has been to try to limit our actions to only essential activities. Uh, and so as we kind of, one, learn to navigate this environment a little bit uh, smoother and a little bit better. Uh, and then uh, we, you know, we kind of are some of, uh, again, some of our restrictions right now are loose and we'll get back to in some of our reports um, 
you know, and we do have some normal policies that we uh, we do need to update that we'll come back to in May. Um, but uh, we're just, you know, again, new experience for all of us. So kind of working our way through that, but there'll be uh, essential work that we need to do has to continue. So those policies will, continue, will come back. Thank you. All right, so we are done with our discussion with action. We do not have old business under the agenda. We do not have item 12, new business. So we'll move to item 13, upcoming events. Okay, so uh, it was initially posted prior to the governor's declaration of shutting down in school, uh, um, school in-person instruction for the remainder of the school year. Uh, so we'll start to update this. You can see we do have some events that are still pending. They may be done via a Zoom format or some other way, um, but uh, you can kind of see that the next series of things, our next meeting is scheduled for May 4th um and um then the may 19th after that note that the uh last day of classes will well the last day of school will be may 22nd uh, we're finalizing our calendar uh to uh for remote learning and so uh, we will have an update uh, very soon regarding uh days of student attendance okay and thank you also for your update with regard to seniors i know there's been communication to them with some numerous dates that they'll have as well um, okay, any other items on the schedule of events, Donna? So, Dan, I had a question as far as, uh, I know the last day of classes is the 22nd, but will the last day of seniors be on the 18th? Uh, we are finalizing that calendar right now and we will have that out. Okay, because that was a question that I have gotten from a number of people. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments with regard to the schedule of events? Okay, and as Dan said, they'll be updating it. All right, so that reaches, uh, that brings us to item 14, adjournment. Um, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay, a motion and second are heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you to all of you. Thanks. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.